Okay, Rabotai, we're up to the Mishnah 20A1. Um, yeah, everyone see the Megillah? Yeah, where are we on the Mishnah and Megillah 20A1 oh, at the bottom? The yeah. We may not read the Megillah? Uh, we may not read the Megillah, yes. In according to Megillah, we do not read the Megillah. Velo malin, and you do not do Brit Milah. Velo tovlin, and you do not go to the Mikveh. Okay, velo mazin, and you do not do the Hazaya. What does mazin mean? What is Hazaya? Right, we, well, what kind of sprinkling specifically? Right, the Gemara, again, we'll talk exactly about what this means, but in general, we're talking about the Hazaya of Tahara of purifying someone from a tamemet. V'chein shomeret yavam keneged yom lo titbol. And someone who is a shomeret yavam. Now that's going to take us a little bit of uh, uh, of time, okay? To be shomeret yom keneged yom. Someone who is connect connect uh, who is watching a day shomeret yom keneged yom opposite a day uh, is not allowed to do tevila. And we'll see. Like I said, we'll see exactly what that means uh, uh, a little in a, in a little bit. <coughs> And um, we'll see exactly why all these cases, we don't have that opportunity that she does not do tidbol. Until the sun rises. <coughs> Once, if you did it, <coughs> after Amud HaShachar, which means after the, uh, the, <coughs> the first time that the, sun, the sun's rays are uh, present on the horizon, then the halacha is kasher, it is kosher. Are you with us? We'll give Harry a second to, get to find it. It's in this different Gemara. Okay? So, um, let's look at Rashi for one second. Rashi says, V'chulan sh'asu. You see the last Rashi? V'chulan sh'asu. In all these cases, sh'asu, that you did them after Alot HaShachar, Dime'alot HaShachar yemamahu. From the time of Alot HaShachar, it's already daytime. Since not everybody knows exactly when Amud HaShachar is, because when it comes to Nets, Nets is, you see, the sun. He's, you can't make a mistake. When it comes to Amud HaShachar, it's when the rays of light are shining on the world. But to distinguish between the pre-dawn light and post-dawn light, you have to know exactly. That's the whole Gemara and Berachot, at when you can tell the difference between this color and that color. So it, this, that's already difficult, more difficult to ascertain. So therefore, what do we tell you in the ideal scenario? We really want you to have it after uh, uh, you, you uh, till uh, um, after Netzachama. But if you did these things, all these things require daytime. But if you did them after Amud HaShachar, which is the absolute beginning of daytime, you're kosher, we just, Lecha Tichila, want you to wait, wait until nets, until sunrise, because that's a time that people won't make mistakes, and then you know for sure that it was done during the daytime. Says the Gemara, Minalan, let's start, we're going to do one at a time. How do we know that the Megillah needs to be read in the daytime? The Amar Kera, because the Pasuk says, These days are remembered and they are done. Nasim, they are uh, commemorated. Bayom in Balailalo. Why specifically? Uh, what's the lesson of Bayom in? Uh, why do we understand that in the daytime, yes, and in the nighttime, no? Right? Because the Pasuk says, Ma'ele. Right? So, therefore, it means Yamim. So, when, when, is, when am I going to do that? I'm going to do it during the daytime. The Gemara says, Lema David Yufta Yoshua ben Levi. Let it be a. Uh, uh, Knockout of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. What does Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi say? Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Chayav Adam, a person is obligated to lekrot the Megillah by Laila Lishanot Abayom. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi says a person has an obligation to read the Megillah at night and then to read it again during the daytime. The Mishnah just said that you read it in the daytime. And what was the proof? Because it said by Yamim. And we said from the Yamim, by Yom Ken, by Laila Lo. So it sounds like the Gemara, the, the Gemara is understanding the Mishnah to mean that you only have an obligation to read the Megillah during the daytime. And Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi taught us you have to read the Megillah in the nighttime and in the daytime. The Gemara continues. Kikatani, <coughs> Kikatani ad yom. What is the Mishnah telling you, right? It's telling you that when, uh, when, ad yom, that when the second obligation is is valid. So in other words, in the nighttime, you, you know when you're reading it, in the nighttime, okay? But when it comes to the daytime, from when are you allowed to read the daytime reading? So in other words, the first instance was the Gemara saying that the Mishnah, according to what you're saying, seems to be saying that you only read the Megillah in the daytime. 
But the second understanding is no. It's saying the daytime Megillah that needs to be read in the daytime, from when do you read it? From Nets. What happens if you read it after Amud HaShachar? Bidiyevid, Yatsa. Okay? The Gemara continues. Velo Malin. And we do not circumcise. The Gemara uh, is going to bring a proof for that idea. Dichtiv, because it says, Ubayom HaShemini Yimol. And on the eighth day, you bring, you do the Brit Milah. So again, from the fact that the Gemara saw that the Pasuk says, Biyom HaShemini, okay? So we understand from that that the obligation is to do it in the daytime. Now, the question is, let me ask you this. Yom HaShemini, right? Yom HaShemini. When is Yom HaShemini? Halakha. When does it start exactly, Yom HaShemini? After nightfall on the seventh day. For every other thing, when you tell me uh, that a person has an obligation to rest on, on Yom HaShemini, do we rest from the morning of the seventh, of the seventh day? No, no, night before. So why are we learning from the fact that it says Yom HaShemini, that it means the daytime, any more than we hold that Yom HaShemini, Shabbat Nafash, that we have an obligation, right, to rest from the evening before when it also says Bayom. So why is the Gemara understanding from the word Bayom that it means to exclude this? This should be a very obvious question that everyone should ask. Okay? So maybe, maybe what the Gemara over here is trying to say is that, is that, um, when the Torah was telling you there's a Hayyub Brit Milah, if it wanted to tell you that you could do it any time on the eighth day, it would say, Ula Achar, and after seven days, yeah? Yimol Besar Why does it have to say? By Yom Shemini seems to be instituting. Now, so you could ask me the same question back on Shabbat. Why? That doesn't say Yom Shemini. So also it says, uh, you know, Shesh Shemim Tav, right? Tase Melacha, Uba Yom Shemini, Shabbat Vinafash. Starts with shishi. Excellent. So by Shabbat, it goes out of its way to tell you each time that six days, you know, you could work. Right? So when does the sixth day end? When the sixth day ends. So I understand that the qualifier of Yom Shivi'i is attached to, it doesn't say that um, when it comes to uh, Brit Milah. Okay? Seven days do nothing. On the eighth day, so therefore, the halakha is Yom HaShemini. Now, by the way, this halakha is not only on the eighth day. Once we saw that we ascertained that a milah has to be in the eighth day, now already we decide all brit milah needs to be on the eighth day. just want to share with you something crazy that happened only yesterday or two days ago, right? I mentioned in the morning class, I, was, I, wanted to, I, forgot, I forgot to mention it today. We have a chazak branch in Los Angeles run by Rabbi Meir Sultan. A man comes in who suffers from some muscular, you know, uh, I think one of the, you know, one of the muscular, neuromuscular diseases. He can't walk, he can't bounce, he's nearly blind, he can't see. He comes to the rabbi, he's 50 years old, and he asks the rabbi, I want to have a brit milah. He's a mohel. So every time you always ask, when a guy comes in 50 years old, Jewish parents, never had a brit milah, right? Not, obviously not religious if he doesn't have a brit milah at the age of 50. And what do you ask? Why? Why? Why now? He said, I have this disability. I can barely see. But my brothers and sisters in Eretz Israel are fighting for their lives. And I thought to myself, what could I do as a zechut for my brothers and sisters? What if it is good today? Talk about being uncomfortable. <laughs> that would have fit. <laughs> 50 years wow. old. Brit Milah. Not Noah. Not Noah. <laughs> that unbelievable. But can I just ask you, how comforted do you feel right now that there are Jews like this? You see, that e nochiyu, the opposite of Noah, brings this state of Nechama. Okay, let's continue. Says the Gemara. Velo tovlin, velo mazin. The halacha is you're not allowed to do, go to the mikveh, and you're not allowed to be mazin. You're not allowed to do, do the sprinkling of the uh, purification of uh, tumah. Only in daytime. Dichtiv hizah hatahor la tameh 
by Yom HaShavii, same thing. You will, you'll sprinkle the person on the seventh day. So you see, again, that the sprinkling is on the seventh day, and dafka the day. And then the Gemara says, And we, uh, we have a hekesh, which means tevila has a connection to the sprinkling. So once we learn that the sprinkling is dafka only on the seventh, on the, during the daytime, we also understand that the tevila is also can only be uh, in the daytime. <clears throat> says the Gemara, Same too, when you have a woman who is watching day by day, we'll see exactly what that means, okay? Um, the halakha is that she cannot do uh, the, the, the tevila until the sun until the sun is completely risen. However, if she does it after Amud HaShachar, it's kosher. The Gemara is, is, explains that when you have a, 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 a person who has uh, a, 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 the, the, she counts the pure days of family purity, okay? So after that point, there's an extended period of time when she has an opportunity to become a, 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 a ziva or zava. Ziva means when there's something, a flow that comes from the body that's impure. So if in a specific case where she has that kind of uh, body, bodily um, ex, uh, excrement, uh, emission, or she excretes that, uh, that specific thing of ziva, which, and fulfills those obligations. So the halakha is, she has to wait to see that a day is clean before she could do tevila. Now, now, sorry? Exactly. And once she finds out that she's tahor, she's allowed to dip on that day. So shomeret yom kineged yom, she's waiting to see, is it only going to see two days or am I going to see three days? By the way, if you remember, this was very difficult when we were doing the en ben, this to that, en ben, en ben, this to that. One of the en bens was the en ben of ziva, of someone who has a ziva to some of the emissions, remember? So this is that thing. So when the woman is shomeret yom kineged yom, so she's waiting to see if she had this, the ziva of three days versus two days, which institute the process of zava. So in that scenario, what happens? She's able now to go to the mikveh as soon as she sees that, that, that she didn't have that emission. But when does she go? She goes also during the daytime. Says the Gemara, Pshita. What do you mean? You're asking me for the source for this halakha? Obvious. Maishna shomer yom yom Once you told me in the line before that tevila, that, that uh, dipping, uh, in the daytime requires, dipping is required to do in the daytime uh, from the hekesh, the connection to hazaya, to sprinkling of the water for Tumah. So therefore, any tevila is going to be the same as this. Why would I imagine that shomeret yom kineged yom should be any different? So you don't, you're asking me for a source. I already gave you the source for, for any dipping in the mikveh. Why do you think that this one needs its own source? The Gemara answers, it's strich salka daita The reason why I need it is, because I, I might have thought, tehevi kiriyari shona shel zav. It should be like the first riyah, the first time when someone sees uh, a zav. Riyari shona shel zav. And the first seeing of the zav, itkish lebal keri, is compared to a scenario when someone has uh, an, a discharge of of shichvat zera, of uh, of seminal discharge. So since those two things are compared, zav and baal keri, dichtiv zot torat azav asher tetzem menus shichvat zera, because the pasuk uses the words torat zav with connection to the words of shichvat zera. So if it connects them, mag baal keri tovel biyom, just like a baal keri. He dips during the daytime, right? Someone who experiences seminal discharge. So to this person should also uh, dip themselves on, uh, on the day as well. And they don't have to wait another day in order to dip. They should just be able to do it on the first day. Now this woman, is she allowed to dip on that first day after she sees it? No. She has to wait to see if she's going to see another day. So therefore, if we made her wait, and therefore she's not similar to the laws of Baal Keri in that way, I might thought also, she would not be able to dip on that clean day and she would have to wait until the night time. Like the amount of days of her ziva is is the same thing as the uh, tuma of the nida. So therefore, I might think that she would have to wait until nightfall to wait a little bit longer to ensure that there's nothing that's coming. So there's an extra period of, of waiting. Still says the Gemara, therefore, we're teaching you over here, since she has an obligation to count a day, 
the Sfira counts uh, in the daytime. So therefore, the Halakha is, even though I might have thought a Zava, Shomer Yom Kineged Yom, would have an obligation to, bat, to, to dip in the nighttime, because it's not compared to Balkari in as much as she can't just dip on the day that after she saw, like Balkari can. So since we're more strict for her, we might have thought we're more strict that she has to have an extra partial uh, waiting period to see if it's coming, uh, this, this uh, ziva again. And therefore, to counteract that thought, the Mishnah is coming to tell you the chidush, that even the Shomer Yom Kineged Yom, since she's counting, Sefirah always happens during the daytime. Okay? The Mishnah continues. The Mishnah says, any of these people, if they did all these things that we told you have to be after nets, if they did them, if Amud HaShacha, the earlier time, allowed. Okay? How do we know? So all these things that you just proved to me, you just proved to me that they were during the daytime. Now we're asking another question. Okay, so maybe the daytime means that there has to be after nets. Who told you that it could be valid from the time of Amud HaShacha? The Gemara answers, And God called the light day. What does that mean? Once it already starts becoming light, he called it the daytime. So therefore, you see in the Pasuk itself that the Pasuk is the one that's telling you Yom this, Yom that, fine. So let's see, what does God call Yom? He or, God sees there's light and he calls it Yom Echad. So therefore, he associates light that's coming and lighting up, up, up the world, that once the light starts to come, that's already the daytime. So therefore, when does the day start? Amud HaShachar. Because at that point, there is already daytime. The Gemara says, Elameata, according to what you just explained, Karalaila. It says the, the same uh, pasuk over there, and he called darkness night. So if that's the case, that when you said light, you didn't mean light in its strength, where the, the source of light is already visible. Rather, it meant that the beginnings of light is already considered uh, is already considered nighttime, so then you would have to also associate the same idea when you say darkness is night, it would mean from the onset of darkness. Ha kaimalan, we actually hold until the stars come out, it's not night. Which is not the, the which is not it's the opposite. It's it would be the equivalent of waiting till nets. Mm-hmm. So it's like you in the daytime, you're waiting for the first light. And the nighttime, you're waiting, so, so to speak, for the last night, for the last darkness, period of darkness to come out. The Gemara says that can't be the proof. Ela ama Rabbi Zera me'acha. Rabbi Zera proves from here. Ve'anachnu osim ba'melacha ve'chetzia machzikim ba'remachim. We did the work. Now this pasuk. Let's just see the pasuk inside. The pasuk is in the uh, insert inside column. You see it over there. It's a pasuk in Nehemiah. And we were doing the work. And some of them held uh, the spears. From the first ray of dawn until the stars came out. And the pasuk then says in that pasuk, I said to the people, each person with his uh, with his uh, arms bare, Yalinu b'toch Yushalayim, should sleep in Jerusalem. V'hayu lanu halayla mishmar, and tonight will be for us to guard. V'hayom melacha, and the daytime will be uh, to work. So when we talk about this period of time that Nehemiah delineated, i.e., Amud Hashachar until Tzeta Kochavim as the daytime. And he says, and the nighttime will be a time where we watch guard. He institutes that that's exactly the time of night versus day. My Omer says the Gemara, why did you need a second pasuk? The first pasuk says, and I said to the people that they should be watching the work. It gave a time period. Why did you need the second verse? Why couldn't I find it and understand this already from the first verse that, that's the de- that that is a period of time that we specify as day? The Gemara says, and if you think, is not a daytime. And when uh, the sun sets, right? Lelia, that's nighttime. The Inu Mikadme Umachashche. These guys, maybe really, that's not the daytime, but these people, they got up before the daytime. 
and they went, they went to Mishmar to guard after the nighttime. But they weren't talking about the halachic element of day. They were using every minute of even possible light to be able to do the work. Tashma, therefore the Pasuk tells you, tells you So therefore, the second Pasuk comes along and explicitly states that this period of time was daytime and this period of time was, was nighttime. And that for us is already a, uh, a raya. Now, let's just be clear. How many times have we seen this already? How could you bring a proof for a deoraita from, from Nehemiah? So you're telling me that you're going to tell me what time to do a brit milah from a pasuk in, in Nevi'im Ketuvim, came after. So why, why is the Torah bound by Nevi'im? V'chidivre Torah medivre Kabbalah yalfinan. Do we learn the words of Torah, the words of Halakha from the Nevi'im? Answers the Gemara and Baba Metzia. We've said this many times. The Gemara says, V'chimelifu? Is this... A limud? Are we learning something here? <clears throat> it's gilui milta be'alma, exactly. All I'm saying is that you want to know what Judaism considers yom? Look, in the Nevi'im, in conversation, they were telling you what daytime was. So when something is being proved, what's the example in Baba Kama? The Gemara over there is trying to figure out what negicha means, because the Pasuk says, ki yigach shor ish, when a shore of a man is yigach, what does yigach mean? Oh, yeah. Brings the Gemara Pasuk. The Pasuk says, ba'ele tinagach et aram. The guy was holding up horns, and he says, with these, should you gore aram? Must be that goring is with horns. Gemara, what do you have that pasuk for? Answers the Gemara because gilu milta be'alma. It's a, it's only a revelation that that's what the word means. So for reference, we could use nevi'im and ketubim, no problem. Okay, should we end here? It's eleven o'clock. I don't know if people need to go. Yeah, yeah, people need to. go. Okay, said uh, Rosh Chodesh Tov. That's why we started late. Chodesh Tov Morach. Hashem should bless us all with an amazing month. Yeshuot and Nehamot.